like we do it. Hey, hey, welcome to Pretty Corrupt Podcast, your inside guide to celebrity scandals and the reality of reality TV. I'm Jordan Ross Myers, the man behind Twitter's notorious Don Gunvalson and Lee Radswell, along with my co host, Stacey Noel Connor. This week, we're taking you inside. Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker's questionable pregnancy announcement, Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott's long-awaited divorce, the end of Meghan Markle's podcast, and, of course, over on Bravo, the latest from Real Housewives of New Jersey and Real Housewives of Orange County. Ahoy! Bienvenidos. <laughs> How's it? Oh, wait. A third person's missing. Where can Mr. Safer be? You know, I think that he is probably on a yacht somewhere in the middle of like Lake Michigan or something like that. He's doing like Midwestern things, like high class, upper class, Midwestern things, or he's getting liposuction. (laughs) I was going to say because it's Father's Day weekend, the courts finally caught up with him for that unpaid child support. (laughs) I like that better. (laughs) (laughs) It's very true. Anything we throw out on here is a fact. I'm not going to say allegedly with that one. I mean, there there are stories, there are tall tales about Nate Safer during his uh, his (laughs) twenties, and uh, you know he's he's look. He's not married, and I would say that he is he's definitely not gonna be a virgin if he ever gets married. So, you know, I'm just saying there's it's definitely a possibility. So unlike your virgin ears. <laughs> I'm too innocent for this kind of children out of wedlock. Oh my god, I'm blushing. <laughs> do. I'm like a southern belle. Oh, giving me the paper. What if, like, what if the scions of Nathan Safer found him through the podcast? You know, like, oh. that would be really trippy, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe there's that show, Who Do You Think You Are? Where I think it's, um, right, I think that's the one. It's the show that connects, um, like, people with their birth parents. And what if through well, the pod, what if that's, well, I was going to say, what if they reach out to us? Uh, you know, they do a path. Like, well, we tracked you down to their library card from high school, which shows, and then it leads to the podcast, and then we're the ones who expose them. Yep. On the pod, it could be an ambush. That's so, that's really interesting. Yeah. Well, you know what, you know what I found out recently, and this was kind of weird, and don't ask me where I found out about it. Maybe it was listening to another podcast or maybe it was reading the news, but um, there, at least in the United States, there are no limits on how many, when it comes to sperm donors and like, there's no limits of like how many children they can father. And so it's starting to get very weird with like, maybe, you know, People like people growing up and maybe dating their their half brother or half sister, you know, and not knowing that that was that they were related because you know they were you know their you know their father you know through IVF or something like that and and something and so it's genetically getting very weird at places and so some people are like there really need to be limits on this and so because there's only like there's no federal laws there's no state laws. There's only like companies like cryobanks can say, oh, well, we'll only do this. And also there are like IVF centers that'll say, oh, well, you can pay extra if you want to make sure that the, your sperm donor has only donated, you know, only has like maybe five donations been used for five donations, but only at this facility. We can't guarantee it's only five donations at another facility. You know, there's what I mean? a Vince so, Vaughn. So, I, th- I think it is it Vince Vaughn or uh, there's a movie. I think it, it's one of those cheesy rom com actor Delivery Man. Is it him? Tries a delivery. I don't know. Tra- yes, I don't watch a lot Vince- of Vince- after Swingers. I didn't watch a lot of Vince Vaughn movies. 
Oh, okay. It's called Delivery Man. It stars Vince Vaughn. It's from 2000. It's 10 years old, but it was about a guy who donated and then he finds out he has 500 children out there. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there is a story about, and apparently this is not uncommon, but there was a fertility doctor who ended up fathering a lot of the children. Like he used mm-hmm. his sperm instead of using either donor sperm that was supposed to be gotten or the father's sperm that was supposed to be used. And so that's just like maniacal right there to be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You substituted your sperm for the sperm that they thought they were using. I mean, and that's insane. So like, they, yeah, I when think you they do found that, like over like two dozen people huh. so far. I think maybe even more. So yeah, there's like a whole like documentary about it. Yeah, you know who else? It's not a documentary, but it's a docu-series that I'm sure cameras are rolling for season four right now on Hulu. A new pregnancy has been announced. Who could it be? I hope they didn't use a sperm donor. I mean, they said they'd they'd stopped IVF, but, uh, you know... Oh uh, yeah, so it, some people. In case you live under a rock, Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker um, announced their pregnancy in a very. I guess we'll go into it because it was not a surprise at all. That whole announcement reveal was so staged. So staged. So what staged. was it like? A concert? She held up the sign and said, "I'm pregnant." Uh huh. Yeah, she's like, Travis, I'm pregnant. And also people were saying, because there was something about it. I was like, this is kind of familiar. And I was like, oh, yeah, because there's that, I think, the all the small things video. There's a thing where somebody holds up a sign saying, mm-hmm. Travis, I'm pregnant. It's something. So, yes, it was to- totally strange. But then the way he acted like he was surprised. And it was like, no, dude, you guys have hands all over each other all the time. Mm-hmm. And even though she's wearing black and it's shit, you can clearly tell that there's a baby bump. Like, yeah, no, like she's far along, like she's Gregor's. you knew. And also that couple is so up in each other's stuff. Like he would have probably known the second she was pregnant. Like he's mm-hmm. like, baby, I know I got you pregnant this time. Like I know it. And she's like, you did, you did. And they've been taking like <laughs> pregnancy tests every day since they did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They posted a picture after the reveal and it's of him and her and she's in a sheer black top with a good, she's a good trimester in with a bump. They live. Yeah. He obviously has known for weeks and weeks. And that's what makes me think show cameras were rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's Chris's like, handiwork because it's so ridiculous for like right? that was the big reveal. Like he has how many kids? Like two, three, how two. Many kids? Alabama, aspiring Calabasas rapper. And then he has yeah. Landon. Those are with Shauna Mokler. Uh-huh. Who, um, and he has another one. Um, I, well, I guess it's kind of like his adopted one, Atiana mm. De La Hoya. He has that. Um, he care parents her. But he basically, sh- he knows what it's like when women are pregnant. Like, he knows. Like this I would have is, seen her so walking down and- the street and have known. I mean, when they showed her stomach after the reveal, like, so that's why I'm convinced cameras were there. I bet it was, like, yeah. Chris's assistant who used the Sharpie to make that sign for her. <laughs> I'm sure there's actually, there were four previous versions that were not good enough. And then Mm -hmm. there's that final version. So yeah, yeah, definitely. um, Did you you see his ex? It's her fourth kid. And I'm just like. Oh, that's right. That's right. Did you see her, his ex, Shauna Mokler? Um, She claimed she knew for a few weeks, but I don't know how. It's hard. Because probably their kids knew. And the kids told her. Because she wouldn't know. They don't have a great relationship. She has right. said she can't wait for her kids to turn 18, so she never has to speak to him again, co-parenting right. ends. They're kind of, from what I gather, a little bit of a Brandy and Eddie Cibrian. It is, mm-hmm. they, that's the I, some, that's the vibe I get from the way they split. It wasn't 
super amicable. And so I was, I was like, well, he wouldn't tell her, but you're right. They share kids. So they, yeah. Yeah. They share kids. So their kids knew and, and said something to her probably, mm-hmm. you know, it probably just came out. I mean, I'm sure Scott Disick knew early on, mm-hmm. even though like they have a better, him and Courtney have a better relationship than Travis and Shauna Mochler do. And, and also, uh, like, Scott signed to the show. So he has the NDA. <laughs> He has the family yeah. NDA. Yeah. I also think that it's <laughs> the, the minute I saw that she was pregnant, I was like, well, this, this marriage is going to be over sooner than I thought. <laughs> <'Cause>, mm. <laughs> because, because honestly, once you add that baby and Travis Barker can't be the center of Courtney's world anymore and they can't have sex all the time and they can't do all that stuff. Like, The honeymoon's gone. The Mm -hmm. shine is off. Like, I'm maybe, not maybe, I'm very cynical about their relationship. Do I think that they are in love? Absolutely. I think that they love each other. I think they're very into each other. I do not think that this is a fake relationship. But I also, as Mm -hmm. I said early on when they first got together, that it is is a, a burn hard and fast and then flame out type of thing. Kind like of they're, like him they're, and, and Shayna Mokler. Like, it just mm-hmm. is going to go that way. They've kind of been, their whole relationship has been in lust. And now that yes. she's pregnant, they're going to have to find other ways to connect. And it might, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I don't know if people, oh, I don't know if Courtney you follow t- her on on um, Instagram, but it, it's a creator. She's like, it's, um, it's Timmons Lisa or Lisa Timmons, but it's, it's at Timmons Lisa. She does these like hilarious mm. talking over like mm-hmm. as, as a celebrity. And she yeah, did one yeah. on Travis and Courtney. And she was just like, yay. She's like, we just forget about how you dated my sister and like made out with her a few times. And like said, you like really liked her and stuff, but now you're mine. And now I'm pregnant and you're going on tour and I'm going to be with you in the entire time. So that like you, like none of these hoes, they, these hoes know that you're mine and that I'm carrying your baby and you can't have a sex with them. <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. like, I just encourage everybody to follow Lisa Timmons. Like she's hilarious. It's it. She does. She does great rips on, especially Gwyneth Paltrow. She does great ones. Um, but yeah, she's just hilarious. But the Travis one is very, very good. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully Lisa Timmons starts ripping on this next person. Well, I don't know. Maybe she needs, maybe this next person needs a break because they're going through a divorce. Her life is hard. It's very, I can't imagine what, I actually, I would be so angry with life. So I give Tori Spelling credit because <laughs> that's who mm-hmm. we're talking about. She was l- literally born. I, get, I mean, not that we've never, it's not like we don't discuss it like every other episode, but I mean, she was born with such wealth and such promise mm-hmm. and privilege. She could have been the ultimate, ultimate Nepo baby. She was the blue Mm -hmm. ivy of 80s TV. Her (gasps) father. You're right. I mean, she had the vanilla. Let that be a warning to you, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Dude. Also, she's she's the north of the 80s. She's the northwest of the 80s. Yeah. She, and it's all, and now, I mean... Next one, um, well, I mean, her and Dean, Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott f- are divorcing. It was He announced it on Instagram this week. Finally. Finally. And the funny thing is, is in the announcement, he used her, I mean, granted, he did it on Instagram, but he still used her Instagram handle instead of just saying her name. Like, I just was like, why don't you just use her actual name instead of, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I, I I know what day and age we're in, but still, like, at least, I don't know. That was just me. I just thought that was odd, but also completely Dean, because I don't like that man. That I mean, that their marriage Did lasted you? 17 years, which is about mm-hmm. um, 16 years longer than I thought it would. Um, and, I mean, d- no disrespect to their children. They they yeah. have a gaggle of children. They have five children, I believe. And at least, yeah. Yeah. You know, and I just think that's tough. But I also think I was like, dude, this is great. Now Tori can be somewhat free of this man, even though like 
the kids are still all under 18, but like she's finally free of this man and she can resume hopefully her charmed life because let's be honest, her life has just been going downhill since she's been with Dean. Like, oh, I he's mean, an albatross. he's been an albatross around her neck and around her bank account. Yeah, I mean, they have, they had all those shows. They had a good run on reality TV. Um, but they but were they? like oxygen one seasoners. Mm-hmm. They weren't, they were, they were never hits, but it kept the bills paid, I guess. And then, um, yeah, but he, he cheated on her. He didn't bring mm-hmm. much, he didn't bring much to the table. He has a bad <laughs> eye job. Have you seen that Kenny Rogers lift? No, I have. I mean, he had bad eyes. And never trust a man whose eyes are too close together. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. just don't. I but just never trust anybody whose had, eyes are too close together, but especially a man. He has that eye lift that Kenny Rogers had. Uh, and Kenny Rogers. It's just too feminized. Man. Now I have to. No, look it's it up. too narrow. It's it's like squinty. He constantly looks squinty, and it's, I've watched a lot of plastic t- t- plastic surgery. T- uh, not well TikTok and YouTube. It's it's mm-hmm. basically it's too feminized, is what it is. They look. Mm. It's it's the way of doing it. It's not. It's like doing it. F- mo- Unlike most medical procedures, which and medicine, which is geared toward men, plastic surgery is more geared toward women's, and especially mm-hmm. facial plastic surgery is geared, geared more toward um, women's facial features. So eye lifts first were like more geared towards women's facial features. Mm-hmm. So when you do an eye lift for a man, it's very different apparently than for a woman, or like a blepharoplasty. Like it has to be done differently. And mm-hmm. upper blepharoplasty. How the fuck do I know about that? I've yeah. been watching too much YouTube. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But that's one of the things I learned. Like, that was one of the problems with Kenny Rogers was that it was just, it, it feminized him. And I was like, that's what it is. It's like, if that had been put down on Dolly Parton, it would be fine. But on Kenny Rogers, mm-hmm. it's not good. So, yeah. Yeah, I think she spent it all on her. So, no. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I mean, one good thing for her, because like you said, uh, we've broken it down on here a lot. But so, you know, they have a lot... They haven't been too financially. Um, she was born essentially the richest little girl in Beverly Hills at one point, you know. And her mm-hmm. father was Aaron Spelling. Her mother's our queen, Candy. <laughs> and um, mm-hmm. But the thing, where am I going with this? You know, she's been estranged from her mom for years on and off. And I, we should have known about that. We should have known this was a sign. The past year or so, they've been reconnecting. They've been posting pictures with each other, celebrating birthdays and holidays. Last summer, I think it was last summer, Candy took Tori to Paris on a trip, mm-hmm. like a mother daughter. That would have been unheard of 10 years ago. Like they, See, Candy, Candy probably, like, when it first happened, tried to break them up, and it didn't mm-hmm. work. It backfired on her. So then she was like, well, now I have to play the long game, and I have to play the mean game, which means cutting her off slowly and realizing mm-hmm. that this guy can't provide anything for you except for misery and heartbreak. And then once you've reached just about the end of your rope, I'm going to come in and ha- and be like, the best mother ever. I'm not going to save you, but I'm going to show you how much better your life can be without this, this goddamn albatross, mm-hmm. like this, this man, man ball and chain around you. So like, no. you, you know, it's too it. bad. Nate's not here right now. Cause really that dynamic reminds me very much of if Candy was Emily Gilmore from the Gilmore girls <laughs> and, and Tori and Dean were Lorelai and Luke. He was never good enough for her. He was never <laughs> going to be accepted fully. Nate's going to be listening to him. this at the at the lawyer's office, waiting for that paternity <laughs> test to come through, and he's just going to be like, "God damn it! I can't believe I yeah. missed this." <laughs> yeah, that's what. But um, so no, what I'm uh, the you know they have a lot of financial problems. That's why I was saying like she was once mm-hmm. like the richest little girl and she struggled but her mom does pay for the kids expenses they um tuition she covers housing and things like that but she won't pay for their things like she won't pay for tori's spending sprees she won't pay for tori's past due credit card bills all the old debts but she keeps them afloat but the way they've grown closer makes me wonder if it's given tori the financial confidence to leave dean 
leave Dean and return to the spelling fold, where she will mm-hmm. once again be like, <laughs> she she finally she'll she'll again be ranked higher than Randy. Yeah. She'll have that. Reclaim like, your so. crown. Reclaim your crown, Tori. Snatch it back from Randy. Yeah. And so, you know, be be truly taken care of. Like the heiress she was the heiress she thought she would be, and we all assumed she would be. Yeah. And so I'm I'm guessing um this is just a guess, so but I was like I'm sure her mother's her mother's team goes to court here and there, let's just say. I mean, Candy's not afraid to defend herself in court. Mm-hmm. I wonder if the spelling lawyers are handling it for getting Laura Wasser, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel the one thing about Dean, the, fr- the moment I read about the divorce, I was like, wow, he put in all that time and he'll never see a dime of that fortune. <laughs> He better goddamn I mean, not at all. No, but I mean, fully, he'll never I fully support day, screwing him out of any mon- any spelling money. Fully one day, support. Tori will be extremely wealthy, and I don't know. He'll be living in a rental in Van Nuys by that point. I mean, it doesn't really. We need to find career. Tori an elderly billionaire. That's what we need to find Tori now. Or a younger, nice Jewish guy who fully appreciates, maybe not her, but appreciates her mother, the way her mother <laughs> can list off are you, details. Are you, are, are, are you volunteering as tribute? You know, if, it's what, if I have to take one for the team... I'm happy oh. to do so. <laughs> it would be such a sacrifice, but I I think that's one of the sweetest things you've most selfless things you've ever offered. <laughs> that's good. You know Josh Flag follows us and I wonder <laughs> maybe he can put in a good word for us if he's listening. <laughs> wink wink. Oh my god, did you see the po- did you see- people were tweeting like when we shared that news online, people were commenting, too, it's too late for Tori. Candy's already adopted Josh, and she's leaving him everything. Because <laughs> they're so close. <laughs> Those are funny. Those, yeah. They're so close. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, basically, like, you know, yeah, in Josh Flag, Candy found the both the son and daughter she never yet did have. And in... Candy, he found, you know, Edith, Edith, Edith Jr. Basically, mm-hmm. you know, Edith so it's second. like, yep, yep. That's fun. Tori and Jordan take Homeby Hills. I like that. <laughs> Imagine all the the pinky rings you can own. <laughs> God, her mother has some really nice ones that she wants to share. Any other fun? before I before I ruin all my chances because obviously that engagement's on the table. I don't want to jinx it. No, but no. <laughs> what else Not is going on? Oh, uh, I know. Here's a oh. fun segue from Candy uh-huh. the crown with her crown jewels to Megan a royal with. Well, she doesn't have crown jewels, so, <laughs> but yeah, nope. Did you see our chief rival podcast? The one, I mean, every day, every week you look at the podcast rankings internationally and neck and neck, it was archetypes and pretty corrupt. I mean, we were finally edging them out and they gave in. Yeah. I mean, we finally beat them out. Like our 100 episodes to just their 12, just their 12. Episodes. We had a hundred. Was it last week? We had a hundred. Last episodes. week we, we had a hundred episodes, and we didn't know it. We didn't acknowledge it, and so and now Nate's not here to party with us too and to celebrate one hundred. We hit one hundred episodes of Pretty Corrupt Podcast, and we need cake and a party or something like. If, the, or if this was a, if, the, if this was a sitcom, we'd be in syndication now, and that's right. when you can pretty much retire. Right, but this is not a sitcom. This is podcasting. (laughs) 
That's why you yeah. need to rate, review, subscribe, and tell your frenemies about us. So, <laughs> but yeah, I guess send it on the send, send the link to this on your Slack channel, on your work group chat. Like, do do it. Tell everybody about it. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, but yeah, uh, um, archetypes by Megan and Harry. No, it was really Megan's. I don't think was it them together. Megan was, was the host. No, it. Well, this was the thing. They had a Spotify deal to for twenty million dollars, mm. and it was to do several different podcasts, several different things. Like because they basically in other, uh, they were being compared to the Obamas, who have both a Netflix deal and a Spotify deal. And Dave and the Obamas have put out several different projects under the Netflix deal and several different podcasts under the Spotify deal. So the Obamas are churning out content for those deals. Now, for Spotify, all that Megan and Harry have done has have done the Archetypes podcast. And they signed the deal in 2020. And they've only produced... 12 episodes, the last of which aired in November of 2022, the first of which aired in 2022. So it took two years to even start. And then apparently there were like 60 something people like on that podcast to like produce that podcast each episode. Wow. So there was a lot of money put into those. And then when it comes to the Netflix deal, all they've done is their Harry and Meghan special. And then they've got this special with the Invictus games, but that apparently Mm -hmm. was already being uh, taped and filmed before they even left the royal family. So it's very interesting. Like, I, I, you know, they, I mean, look, they're going to land on their feet. They're going to get another home. It just probably is not going to be as big of a money deal or a money grab. Also, podcasting is a little ruthless with these big players like Spotify and iHeartRadio. Like, you got to mm-hmm. produce numbers and you got to produce, you know, revenue for them, for them to keep you or they will drop you. That's yeah. what happens with these guys. And I mean, so, one like that, one like them that was, that was legit, solid, real money being put into that. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like it wasn't like they they're were not going to get paid out their twenty million dollars. Hmm. I wonder yeah, how much they're not they're gonna going to get paid to get. out the full twenty million. So I'm sure their contingencies, basic, basically. I'm yeah, sure their yeah. Lawyers will work it all out. But I mean, they're not. But that, but I mean, stuff like twenty million for a podcast deal is like unheard of. I mean, I understand why they were watching the numbers and like we can't go any further. I love them, mm-hmm. Harry and Megan. Megan, my my truthful Valley Leo Queen <laughs> Duchess, but I support <laughs> her. But no, I could see like the episodes were trickling out, trickling out, trickling. Like, I mean, look, uh, it's been seven months since the last episode that they put out. Mm-hmm. So I just go, I mean, look, I don't, I don't like this person at all, but the, you know, the biggest get that Spotify has is Joe Rogan and, but mm-hmm. he churns out content all the time. And he was, he was already had this podcast for his podcast for a long time. And then Spotify acquired it, you know, mm-hmm. I think call her daddy, same thing, you know, they Spotify got that from, Barstool Sports and everything. Like they've acquired, Spotify's acquired other podcasts that were already established and paid a lot of money for them because that asset was already there. They put out mm-hmm. a lot of money for Megan and Harry for an asset that wasn't there and they basically gave them carte blanche to like create and then they barely created anything. And I think that's, yeah. I don't think it's harsh. I just don't, I don't think that they lived up to the expectation. I mean, honestly, they didn't live up to my expectations. I was expecting like more out of this and, and everything. Mm-hmm. So who knows? I mean, but who knows what goes on behind him? I think, I think they'll have another podcast and it'll be somewhere else. And I think it'll be fine. They'll land on their feet. Oh yeah. No, they'll be, I mean, they're in such, like I saw, I didn't read the whole thing cause it, it came out literally before we hopped on, but that there were rumors that Megan might be come the face of Dior, which I, I mean, look, think. She's got Ari Emanuel as her, as her agent now. So anything mm-hmm. can happen. Yeah, and I mean, it the girl makes went from sense. being on suits to now having Ari Ari Emanuel as her agent. Because you know, like Dior's um, most famous purse is the Lady Die. It was that it's that little bag. Just Google the Lady Die Dior bag. It's still popular. It's like a quilted little, but it's named for Princess Diana. There's an association between Dior. It would. It would actually be kind of a dig to Kate, but picking her as the successor because Diana wore a lot of Dior and they named products after her. So I could, I mean, I could see it happening. 
That's I think that's great because I think it's well suited to her because it's high, extremely high end. Um, she has to be a pretty face, but there's not a you know like you're on red carpet. There is a weird the thing though. Row. Because they also they, they also look at like international sales. I only know this like because of the film industry. Like one of the reasons now that they churn out so many basically comic book movies is because they do mm-hmm. well in international sales. They do well over overseas and basically and especially like the the, the Asian market like chi- in China. Basically, China's mm-hmm. like a big consumer of American like. Um, especially action films and stuff like that. Um, but if it is a film that or, or something that stars a person of color, it does not do well and it, it does not interest them. So that, in my opinion, w- might be the only reason she may not get Dior is because, oh. uh, because of racism, to be honest mm. with you. Like, cause they could go, she's great. She's beautiful. It, that, that Royal tie, tie and everything like that. But we're afraid it might affect our sales in, in China or something like that mm. because Hollywood does what, that already. It's something that Hollywood says. It's like an open secret in Hollywood and it sucks. It sucks. I wonder that, with but. her though, if the um, cachet of the Royal family, it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. I, but, I mean, like she that may that not be o- the help f- overcome it. Someone like her, it might not even be advertisements. Like there are celebrities who are brand ambassadors and, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know the full business, but it's just basically they would dress her in very expensive things for free. Mm-hmm. She'd be basically be an influ- influencer. Yeah. Oh, imagine they called it the Duchess Sam as a follow up to the Lady Die. <laughs> We'll never see Kate Middleton wear Dior again. It's banned no. from the palace. You'll never see anybody in the royal family, the House of Windsor, wearing of the Dior yeah. again. That's yeah. what a shame. I mean, who knows? Yeah. And we're all speaking hypotheticals because we don't know anything. But yeah, yeah. And, you, know, <laughs> you know, another podcast that's out right now, and this one we oh totally have beat. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was listening to a different podcast and I kept hearing ads for this podcast. And I was like, you've got to be fucking joking with me that this mm-hmm. is a podcast. And I was like, and it also made me think too, a couple of weeks ago when we did the poll, uh, the mommy dearest poll of like, which, you know, housewife child would turn on their mother. And some people said this daughter and I, we were both like, nope, not this daughter. She's, mm-hmm. she's too in it. And this podcast proves this in my opinion, because it is, Turtle Time with Ramona and Avery Singer. God. Yes, it's called Turtle Time. <laughs> I'm just like, really? So cheesy. So, so cheesy. cheesy. Oh, I know. They I mean, I want to know what they're going to talk about. Being Ramona. I know. Whatever being fabulous. It is. Being 60 and being fabulous. I, mean, I want to hear her dating advice to Avery. Because I would love to hear it. Because remember, like on uh, New York, that episode where I think it was Luann was giving a single younger Bethany her advice on how mm-hmm. to how to seduce a man, like lean in and whisper and blah blah. I can t- I could totally see Ramona giving Avery some like tips on how to land a husband. That's so like. Mm-hmm dated or just I so mean, awkward to hear from your own mother. That's a good way to put it. And yeah. so, I mean, I mean, those would be the ways to like, now I can't remember their last names, but to, to seduce a, a, a Harry Dubin or a, mm-hmm. a Tom, what's his face? You know what I mean? Those, those old, yeah. Whatever, Tom, those old Tom and Harry. I could yeah. see Tom D'Agostino. D'Agostino, thank yes. And I, I had to think about that because there have been so many Toms lately in the Bravo <laughs> sphere. I didn't mean Schwartz or Sandoval, but yeah. No, yeah. And I, I almost I called know. Harry Harry Dubro, but I was like, no, that's it's a, it's a, diff, it's a different D. I, knew, I was like, I know it's a D. Dubin. And then I was thinking Harry Hamlin. So that's good. Harry Dubin. 
Oh, God, this is worse than my wrap-up. Harry Dubin and Tom D'Agostino. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't listened to their podcast. I mean, I don't really want to. (laughs) The beauty of social media, though, is people just place put recordings up. You know, those screen captures. That's how I learn about most podcast things. Um, Next weekend. This is a PCP, straight from PCP. Next weekend, you will be seeing um, it's Kim Richards' daughter's wedding in Aspen. Whitney Davis. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Brandon that Davis's means, cousin, Whitney? Yes. This girl, Whitney, is equally first cousins with Paris and Nikki, but also Brandon Davis. She's the glue that keeps that oh. our PCP world together. <laughs> And so she's getting married. And the point of that is they're all good. You're going to see in the magazines and everything on Twitter or what, uh, Instagram, the sisters are all going to be there. The whole family, you know, it's a family. And they, that family doesn't hold things against each other's kids. They come together to support the kids. Yeah. And you're going to see yeah. Kyle, Kathy, Kim, just like, like a Bravo, Bravo reunion. So... I'd like oh to gosh. think I'd be there Why in aren't spirit, you invited? but I won't. <laughs> I just was like, yeah, I'd like to think. No, but um, so that's just, that's just something I want to say because, you know, as soon as a picture goes up next week on Instagram, everyone will act like, no, it's us first. <laughs> you heard it here first. Breaking news. God, PCP, this is great. We're, we're slamming other podcasts. We're, <laughs> we're just really... We're just really in a good mood. We're we're just the mean girls tonight. Like, look, all the goodness goes out the window when Nate leaves. (laughs) Who knew Nate was the sunshine keeping us upbeat and positive? Right? Yeah. We've always known I was toxic, but I mean, I thought Nate was right down, (laughs) right down there too. I mean, he is. He just tends to keep his toxicness um, to, to our group chats. (laughs) <laughs> he, plays, he hides it well. He hides it well. <laughs> yeah. Well, what else does that leave? I mean, well, obviously the big new. I mean, Vanderpump is over, so we're basically the New Jersey reunion finally ended. So basically, oh what's keeping us alive right now is Orange County, Real Housewives of Orange County. Can I just say something real quick, though, even though we didn't have it on the schedule, um, about the New Jersey finale? Like, that show, like, can we, I know they're trying to figure out what to do for next year, but, like, Louis is scary. That man is evil. I'm going to yeah. say that. Like, he's evil. And and the thing is, is that he's also just such a such a piece of work because because he just doesn't he wants to be famous so badly and then he's and then he's not realizing that everything he's doing is getting caught on camera and then can be used against him and i just am like well look Teresa's about to have another um felon ex-husband like yeah. the, I'm, I'm sorry. Like that's just what's going to happen here. We're all uh, watching uh, it. Everybody tries to warn her, but she's she's also too enamored with fame and love and being right, and she just doesn't have enough. Yeah, you know, there. one thing I said it. I said it. I'm just. I'm going to be. I'm that person. I think I don't like Teresa. I think she's dumb, and I think she's that dangerous type of dumb where she just she weaponizes things against people. Like she just she can't see. I, she can't see past herself and past her own wants and needs. I know like Juicy Joe, um, he landed her in prison or, you know, whatever. They were, they both went to prison. He's deported, etc. And as bad as that was and what he got them into, I don't think you ever, or people ever felt unsafe around him. I Correct. think Louis makes people feel unsafe. Joe, yeah. Juicy Joe was uh, defrauding banks, um, but mm-hmm. Louis seems a bit, uh, should we put allegedly? Because I don't know what he does. I keep seeing these stories. He like DMs people. He's scary. But I just feel like he could, he's, threat, he's threatening 
Ju- Juicy yeah. Joe was never threatening. This guy seems a little creepy. He slides into DMs if you speak out against him, turns mm-hmm. bright red, mm-hmm. uses all these like kind of power tactics. Like at the mm-hmm. reunion, what was he like? Mm-hmm. Like Di- it was like Diana Jenkins style. He kept what would he? Diana kept he, being like, so you say, so you say. And he kept being like, the time well, he, will he come. also was like, he'd be like, well, come. I misspoke there. And they're like, well, you also said it the next thing. He's like, yeah, you, you misunderstood me. And I was like, no, 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 no. You said the same thing. You talked about Bo Deedle three times, having all this information. Mm-hmm. And now you're saying that you misspoke and that we didn't understand when you was very pointed that this, like you can't, you keep getting caught in your own lies because they're all on tape. And yeah, dude, it's, but yeah, it, he's, karma's coming from him, for him. He's probably going to wind up in my DMs and I'm just going to go, okay, dude, uh, whatever. Like, I'll oh, just go the- hang out with Dina Manzo. She's over here on the West Coast too. So, like, Oh my but- God. I want Louis to come for Dawn. Louis <laughs> well, Louis, know- well, Louis might come from Dawn now. <laughs> Louis doesn't know what he's up against coming for Dawn Gunvalson. No, Bethany because, learned the hard way. Half, half of Twitter will come from him then. <laughs> I'll be so, oh God, now we need, that's my project for the week. I'm going mm-hmm. to try to bait Louis Rellis into <laughs> thinking I'm really Don and then going yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, that man is scary. And I think, I think in a sense, in a way, not that I think that, because I, because I actually like the show with like, the Gorgas and the Judices being on there. Do you know what I, I kind of like that brother sister relationship on the show? Mm-hmm. Like I always think like that that's the thing that makes Jersey different. Cause it always has kind of been around family. So I think to lose that would suck, but I think you have to like cut the oxygen off from Louie. Yeah. I think sense. it's better with and, that. Yeah. yeah like, it. and, and people love Teresa a lot. And so even though I just, <laughs> <laughs> denigrated her character. <laughs> but people people do love her and I think she is good for the show. I just think this this person is just ruining her. And yeah. whatever. Nobody 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 cares really what I think. I just we just have our own podcast and we just get to spew our opinions willy-nilly. So Yeah, I mean but we, now we, that we won't New know Jersey for is a, over. We yeah, we won't what? know for a while what the net. I mean, every day social media is flooded with rumors, sources, this person's out, this person's in. You're not going to hear it. The reunion just ended. They don't have cameras going right now, which means yeah. they're taking time to the network to think it over. Mm-hmm. You're not, mm-hmm. this is what happens with every franchise right after, sometimes even before the reunion, they're like, sources are saying contracts don't happen like that. No. The, there's a con the they'll know in the coming months. I don't know mm-hmm. the exact I'm not involved with New Jersey like then or workings behind the scenes, but th- when the contracts come we'll know it. Mm-hmm. And it won't be these sources who are like Marge and Louie or <laughs> whoever it is who DMs people. So Kim D. Yeah, yeah, the Kim D. <laughs> I mean, look, people people will know things, but also things change. Like, so it's just one of those yeah. things just change, and and yeah, like I just I just say you never you never know exactly what's going to show up until the first episode airs. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, because people get cut sometimes out too. people like, are like, cast. Yeah, they they mm-hmm. they go into the season as cast members, and they get scaled back or cut out. So mm-hmm. yeah. we shall so see. It's a lot. But anyway, so now now the focus is um, Orange County because right. I have because I have to say I've been watching Atlanta and I just can't get behind Atlanta which used to be the like one of the crown jewels honestly of Bravo Housewives is just this season just not cutting it. I mm. just it's really I can't and I it's sad. I don't know what I don't know what needs to be fixed but um Anyway, so Orange County, this this episode, I was just, I was sitting there watching the boat thing, the beginning of the boat, and I just was like, "Oh, look at Shannon prove Tamara right by mm-hmm. cutting in and immediately like while well, the new Jennifer of the new Jennifer and Ryan tr- starting to tell the adoption story, 
the, all of a sudden Shannon's like, wait a minute. Is that John's son? Is that John? Is that, and that boat, like it completely, I was like, just way to prove Tamara completely right. Like you're not doing yourself any favors, Shannon. She doesn't you are an awkward, unself-aware person. I w- okay. I have a theory about that. Cause you know, like you said, um, she, Tamara said that Shannon doesn't care about others. She's not available for others. It's all her. So when mm-hmm. this new girl, Jen, started talking about trying to share her adoption story, which is very touching and you, mm-hmm. deeper and kinder than what we're used to on Housewives, yeah. Shannon can't be bothered. And she's like, what is it? There is that John, John's son? Oh, look at the seals. It's intentional. I think mm-hmm. I think Shannon's trying to protect her place on the show. It's very Ramona like. And so she's going mm. to be resistant to the younger, newer woman. And so she's gonna try anything to cut her story off, cut her screen t- screen time, and circle attention back to herself. It's Ramona slash Vicky like. She mm-hmm. learned this from watching Vicky. Mm-hmm. That, Vicky that's why they're friends Jesus. again. You know they're bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Vicky was another harsh one. They both. Yep. And I think Shannon Shannon is no longer one of the newer. Shannon is a veteran of Orange yep. County at this point. She's one. Her and her and Tamara, I would say, as much as Heather is, Heather's not as committed at the show. No. Um, Tamara and Shannon, it's like their identity. It's their career. And so they're protecting what's theirs. And yeah, no, I, I saw that. You're right. It was very Vicky, very Ramona. So mm-hmm. I, I doubt she really thought that was John's son. I think she no. was just thinking in her head, get me, get me. I need something. Like, is that, yeah. is that a unicorn? Is that Santa's sleigh? Yeah. She was like, I got to create some drama here. This is just going to be too nicey nice and whatever. Like, you know, and, 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 then, and then, she- but then Tamara got so drunk though, too. Like Tamara the thin. I was like, girl can't even keep her eyes open. <laughs> oh my God. Tamara's anger level. I guess now we'll know that it was, she regrets it. It was drinking. It was alcohol related. Cause I thought what it was, was really just her trying to, Tamara's in a weird position where even though she's essentially an OG and a veteran and like pretty iconic housewife, Mm -hmm. she's kind of early in her return season. She's earning her place back on the show. I mean, I I knew she would. She's like you said, she's iconic and she's a pro. Like I knew she would, but she, she's also Tamara. Also she and Shannon are like this. When they get drunk, they get super emotional. Like they're mm-hmm. they're those emotional drunks. Those they're those crier yeller drunks. Like me, I'm a happy drunk. I'm a happy. I want to like hug everybody and like you know, like flirt with you type of drunk. But mm-hmm. like they they are like because like she, like Tamara even said the last time you saw me, I was crying in a bush. You were. She was. She was crying in a bush and she was so drunk, crying in a bush when she like ran away in that Mexico, like when she'd been like fighting with Lizzie and she ran down, she was drunk like all the time. Like they do have happy times while drunk, but they also have extremely emotional times while drunk. Yeah. And so I like, and I also agreed with what Emily said though. And what she was trying to get across to a drunk Tamara and wasn't working was that how is Shannon supposed to know to not call you all the time at night? If you're not telling her, don't call me at night. Like, yes, you want to be there for your friend when she's going through this stuff. But like, if it is, if it is hurting your family, it is bothering stuff. You need to tell Shannon that if you can't tell Shannon that, then how she's supposed to know that she's going to keep, you're not setting a boundary. Mm -hmm. She's just going to keep doing these things. And I didn't disagree with Emily on that. I was like, you know, I came away from this. Clearly unself-aware and needs, Shannon needs to be told boundaries because she can't, she can't kind of gauge them herself. Yeah. I'm I would keep thinking with Emily this episode made me see her and Shane in a new light. They didn't do anything special at all, but I kind of I find them an interesting Bravo couple and I find them their scenes together kind of not soothing, I don't know if that's the word, 
The very, I, I like, like, I could be in the, we could be in the back seat. You know, they're running errands. They're like, I don't know. I like them together. I don't think she's a super strong housewife on her own. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's, she's a supporting housewife more than a, she's not a Tamara or a Shannon, but I think her married life is very interesting TV and I like mm-hmm. it. I like watching it. Without and I'm not making fun of them with that. I mean, no. I'm just like I like their home life. Yeah, and also it, Shane's very interesting. He's his popularity's gone up and down depending on how he's been doing at the bar and law school mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I this is my thing with Emily, and it's it's not a knock on Emily and it's not a knock on Gina necessarily, but they came in together and then they were kind of grouped together, mm-hmm. and I wonder what Emily would have been like if she had been brought on either by herself or with somebody else who was Mm -hmm. a different type of energy. Because I feel like sometimes, um, yeah, I just, there's more to Emily there. She is, she is more like level headed and kind of cool about that stuff, but she also like, she'll bring it to people. Um, but, when Kelly Dodd so I, called her husband a dweeb or whatever, oh God, she was yeah. like ready to punch her. Uh huh. Yeah. So like she'll she she'll go it. hard at times. I think she just picks her moments, and then at times it's like, yeah. So I just wonder what would have happened if, like, let's say, like she came on one year, and then the next year Gina came on. You know what I mean? So they weren't coming right. on together almost like as a pair. Because I think sometimes that can happen when two newbies come on at the same time. They get grouped together. And they automatically yeah. are either supposed to be best friends or supposed to be enemies. I so. know. Like, we can't see them the way... I guess they are friends off camera, according to that backstory with Heather saying that Gina and Emily didn't invite them to their off-camera charity event that they did together. Cause I was really like, I don't see that close of a friendship. I mean, I get, like you said, they came on together. So they're kind of grouped together, but like, I don't know. But they do have kids they're around not, the same age. Yeah. Cause so like, there's that. Yeah. They have some kind of bond. I wonder if it's just like a bond, like, um, it's a trauma bond from being on this show <laughs> and being hazed by those women together. Yep. And so I think they were like, we're going to either, we're going to have to get through this together. And so I do, though, I do like Shane and Emily together. You know, Mm -hmm. there's so much more to their story. And I don't mean that in a dark way. I just mean you do have like, okay, she, he, he seems like a little guy. She's beautiful and curvy. Mm -hmm. He is Mormon and seems, practicing mormon she's not he comes from a very close-knit family she absolutely doesn't so i don't mean they need their own spinoff but i just want their life is so interesting to me because it's like they're an odd couple but i don't know i agree it's it's refreshing And, and he's also i have always though i've always gotten his sense of humor though Mm -hmm. and enjoyed it there were times that i did notice i was like when they were having definitely marital issues i was like "Ooh, this is getting a little too tense like i don't think you're kidding here i think this is passive aggressive but in general like like when like when he would say some stuff even at the beginning i was like oh this guy's so dry and sarcastic i love it and when like when he made when he really pissed off kelly dot i was like yes yes Yes. she's too stupid to get it too so there you go yeah, I think he, um, I don't know, he's welcome at Dawn's River House, and he... Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when They're they, both it, welcome to come on the podcast anytime, too. True. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. She follow. In case we'll you need any out. legal advice as well. Oh, that's, enough, that's a good point. They're both... Um, They're both lawyers. Always good to have a lawyer in your friend circle. And she's a party planner, too. And she's and she's got good taste. Like the parties she plans. Like some people are some people are tacky down there in Orange County. She's not. Yeah. She's classy. We like events. We like tempting lawsuits. I think we have a new best friend. <laughs> Emily, will you be our, will you be our lawyer when when Louie comes after us for defamation? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Temple. Please, in- please, Emily, please. <laughs> please, Shane, we'll go to Temple, please. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. We'll wear the special underwear. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I will self tan. I'll put on self tanner. Look, I'm on <laughs> and some hair extensions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up. I wonder if there are any references or uh, what's that? Cro- if there's any crossover between? I mean, I guess not all Mormons know each other. That would be like being like. All Jews know each other. But I was just thinking, like, it's funny because he's Mormon, but he's not on Salt Lake City. I wonder if they know people in common outside of Bravo. Although, technically, I believe there is, like, a book that your name is written in as a Mormon. Mm-hmm. And so, like, te- I mean, not necessarily, like, I- I- I'm confused as to whether it is a spiritual book or an actual physical book. And not like it would, if it was a physical book, that it's, like, you know, the phone tree that goes out to everybody or some or like out to every Mormon. But I'd be like, well, technically his name is in the book. So shouldn't all Mormons know each other <laughs> then? Because if it's written in the book. So <laughs> yeah. Probably there's a Mormon listening being and like tearing their hair out and be like, oh my God, she doesn't know anything. I'll be like, you're absolutely right. I know nothing about Mormons. Yeah. Except for That's- special underwear and gold tablets. And um yeah, Joseph Smith. Uh-huh. Before bit, you know, let's see, we've tonight we have slammed other podcasts. <laughs> we've put down well, that we've 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 gone after Louie. We've Teresa. Oddly, she, <laughs> oddly, it sounds like Shane and Emily came out unscathed tonight, but like Pretty we're much, propping yeah. them up. It's yeah. wild. This is this has become a Shane and Emily appreciation podcast. It's so weird. I never expected that. <laughs> you know what? From you though, because you are dry and awkward, it, it actually makes sense that you you have a, a deep appreciation for Shane. <laughs> well, speaking of awkward, on that note, I guess it's time to wrap up for this week. Okay. But make sure to. Rate, subscribe, review, and follow. I got it. Yay. I sound like a child. Yay. Rate, review, subscribe, (laughs) and follow. Pretty Corrupt Podcast. Make sure to head on over to Instagram and TikTok, where you can find us at Pretty Corrupt Podcast. On Twitter, we're at Pretty Corrupt One. And, of course, on all accounts, you could find our personal ones, Stacey's, Nate's, and mine. Um, and the other thing, who should you share it with this week? <laughs> your therapist, your friends, frenemies, drug dealers, doctor who gives you Botox, the nurse mm-hmm. who gives you Ozempic. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the maybe not you over. Yeah, uh, maybe not Louie if you're a tree if you're a tree hugger slash tree stump. But maybe because that would kind of fulfill that sick need I have, we have for them to come after us. Give it you to Shane it. and Emily for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Shane and Emily. You can tell you can definitely share it with Shane and Emily for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Like I said earlier, Slack ch- your Slack channel, your work Slack channel, share it there as well. Um, I like the nurse that gives you a Zimpic. I think that's a good one. <laughs> Definitely, and the and the doctor who gives you Botox. On that anybody note, anybody that you know, the front desk person at your Pilates studio, the the per, the well, school's out. I was going to say like the crossing guard at your children's school. The school's out, so there we go. The flight attendant, be nice to your flight attendants with summer vacation coming up. Be nice to your flight attendants. Be nice to the gate people at the airports. You t- that goes for you too, Jordan. Since you're hopping on a flight tomorrow, so there we go. Yeah. Be nice to the well, flight attendants. <laughs> On that note, ready for takeoff? <laughs> They're landing? Aye, aye, Captain. Adios. <laughs>